The 98-year-old vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger, is convinced that the dollar and all other fiat currencies are headed to zero within the next century. He's not the only one with this outlook. In fact, many other economists and financial analysts claim that the day of reckoning might arrive sooner, much sooner. With rampant inflation, new and emerging assets, and much more, the idea doesn't sound so crazy anymore. Thanks for tuning in again to Profit Protection. We're bringing you the biggest ideas from the thought leaders in the digital asset, crypto, and financial markets. Today's video is a valuable one. We're going to break down Charlie Munger's comments and explore the factors behind the decline of fiat currencies. You're going to want to stick around until the end because we have three great tips for you when it comes to protecting your money over the next few decades. We're in uncertain times, so you'll want to be prepared. Let's dive right in. Charlie Munger is the right-hand man of Warren Buffett and serves as vice chairman at his financial flagship, Berkshire Hathaway. The billionaire investor certainly doesn't live in Buffett's shadow, that's for sure. He has made a name for himself in many fields, beginning with real estate law and eventually starting his own financial firm, Wheeler, Munger & Co. with partners. More recently, he was the chairman of the Westco Financial Corporation. Westco managed an equity portfolio of $1.5 billion for many large and noteworthy corporations, such as Coca-Cola, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, and more. The Westco Financial Corporation was eventually brought under the helm of Berkshire Hathaway, and he has remained there ever since. Charlie Munger has been in the game a long time. He's been overseeing assets and investments since the 1960s. It's common in today's online community to discount the elder investors like Charlie and Warren Buffett. The fact remains that they are reservoirs of economic and financial knowledge. Many traditional investors from their generation seem convinced of the permanence of our financial system, touting dollars and company stocks as foolproof solutions to holding wealth. Fortunately, Charlie maintains a more dynamic view of the markets today, and he has something to say. What does Charlie Munger mean exactly when he says fiat currencies are heading to zero? His comment is pretty straightforward, so let's run the clip. Are we looking at a prolonged decline um, in the markets because of inflation? Is inflation on the rise, and should we be concerned about it? Well, let me take that in the reverse order. Inflation is a very serious subject. You can argue it's the way democracies die. When democracy dies in Latin America, inflation is a big part of it. So it's a huge danger once you've got a populace that learns it can vote itself money. It, it, if you overdo it too much, you ruin your, your civilization a lot. And so, of course, it's a big, long-range danger. If you look at the Roman Republic, and even after they went to an empire with an absolute ruler, they inflated the currency steadily for hundreds of years, and eventually the whole damn Roman Empire collapsed. So it's the biggest long-range danger we have, probably, apart from nuclear war. Is it something investors need to be worried about, specifically when it comes to growth stocks right now? Well, I think the safe assumption for an investor is that over the next 100 years, the currency is going to zero. That's my working hypothesis. Wow. Well, that'll be a different type of environment, won't it? A very dangerous environment. The concept that Munger is speaking on is simple, yet incredibly concerning for anyone who is integrated into society. When the monetary system fails, so does the nation. This has been a common cycle within human civilization ever since currencies were introduced. We're going to dig deeper into this idea of inflation and how it could drive the dollar, peso, yen, and much more to zero. If Charlie Munger is right, what would the road to a totally devalued dollar look like? Today's video isn't about fear-mongering and spreading inflation hysteria. In fact, there's no guarantee that inflation will get much worse or that fiat currencies will collapse. That being said, it's important to learn what the worst-case scenario would look like so you know it if you see it. Let's back up to what started all this inflation talk. 
It was the infamous year of 2020, and a global pandemic forced the government and its population to take extreme countermeasures against the threat of COVID-19. There were a few key factors that brought inflation numbers to unforeseen heights. Let's look at three of them. Number one, supply chain issues. When the world ground to a halt in a disjointed attempt at lockdowns and quarantines, most industries ground to a halt as well. There were disagreements on what was considered necessary and what could be suspended, but in the end, the disruption caused a ripple effect. Not every industry got back on its feet at the same time, and the supply chains feeding them all were facing similar issues. This was a big contributor to inflation. Shortages of all kinds forced distributors to raise their prices, and the consumers took the brunt of it. Even today, these supply chain issues aren't sorted out, and prices continue to reflect it. It's worth noting that this is expected to contribute only to short-term inflation. Number 2. The Federal Reserve's Money Printer The Fed is the government's central bank system that oversees regulation of the economy, among much more. It was created to help stabilize the economy when needed, and it has been doing so for decades. The Fed has the power to do many things, and one of these things is to print more money to prop up the economy in tough times. Downside to this is that the more money the Fed prints, the less valuable it becomes. This isn't a complex economic phenomenon, it's just simple math. The less scarce the dollar becomes, the less it's worth. The less the dollar is worth, the more dollars it takes to buy a loaf of bread. This is why there are concerns over money printing, especially because 80% of all US dollars in existence were printed in the last 22 months. That's $16 trillion between January 2020 and October 2021 alone. Here are Charlie's thoughts on this from the same interview. Going back to inflation specifically though, Charlie, do you think the Federal Reserve is doing the right thing now or not? Well, of course, you know, modern democracy in the age of Keynes, you're going to get big government reaction. The reaction this time was bigger than it's ever been before in the history of the United States. They just threw money at the problem. And they were probably right to, to fear what was going to happen and to be quite liberal in throwing money at it, but they probably overdid it a little. They threw so much money so fast that it's hard for the restaurants to get people to do the work. But I don't criticize it. It's hard to make these decisions under pressure. Number three, a labor shortage in a reopening economy. Upward pressure on prices appears when businesses have high demands, coupled with insufficient workers and must charge more to make up the difference. Our economy has reopened almost completely, but the amount of people returning to work has lagged behind significantly. This is a problem across all parts of the supply chain, from manufacturers to shipping to entry-level store workers. Whether this will persist as a problem remains to be seen, because the motivation for the workforce to return to the previous compensation and work conditions seem to be significantly diminished. All three of these factors, supply chain issues, money printing, and labor shortages, are working together to inflate the prices of goods and services. Whether they will continue to be an issue remains to be seen. All three can re-emerge as problems at any time. With the current state of the economy, another disruptive event like the pandemic could easily push the monetary system to its limits and trigger further inflation. Before we dive into some useful tips for protecting yourself against an inflating dollar, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to produce these analyses for you. We love being part of the online community and your support is invaluable. So if there's a chance that we could see inflation or eventually a zero value dollar, what can you do to keep your money protected? While it's hard to say what our economy and society would look like with a true financial collapse, there are a few ways you can prepare your savings and any accrued wealth. We've covered these in one way or another on our channel so far, and anyone who understands the monetary system in America or the globe would do well to consider these options. Tip number one, hedge against inflation by investing in different assets. In a previous video covering MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor, we mentioned a gem he dropped during an interview with Tom Bilyeu. It's very rare that you find a technology that's the solution to every rich person's problem and every poor person's problem 
simultaneously. The nature of cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, reveals the best opportunity we have ever seen in financial history for storing wealth. Whether you call yourself rich or poor, the same principles apply. Using Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation and a place to store money is something that benefits anyone who lives in our economy. If you have been following, you will understand that an investment strategy involving Bitcoin should be made with the far future in mind. I'm from the future. Michael Saylor's theory on this is very clear. Because digital assets are a new development in the financial space, you need to understand it well before jumping in. Another great asset is real estate. Although it certainly devalues along with currency, it is not conceptual like the dollar, euro, or cryptocurrency. You will always have the fiscal value stored in your property and it serves as an asset you can sell or trade when needed, even if it isn't always easy to maintain. Tip number two, invest in short-term bonds. Bond. James Bond. Many people are afraid of bonds due to being locked in to an investment for a decade or more. Even though the government promises to fulfill their end of the deal and buy your bond back, the uncertainty can get to you. Despite this, bonds are actually a great way to protect yourself from future inflation if you have the option to pick shorter term bonds. When inflation is rising, interest rates generally follow. Bonds are a great way to line up some fixed income that's dependable. You don't want to be caught in the middle of heavy inflation with a bond that's only halfway matured. Purchasing shorter term bonds continually throughout your life can give you the upside of owning bonds while mitigating the risk of holding them through unexpected inflation. Tip number three, fixing your future expenses. This is a side to your finances that's often overlooked when planning for a possible inflation. Many people are concerned with which stocks to be holding or what crypto will pop off sooner. In reality, there are expenses that you have today that will be quite unfortunate if heavy inflation hits tomorrow. You should examine what expenses you see month to month and year to year that can be locked in at a decent rate. Example of this might be home mortgages or car payments. Knowing exactly what you will be paying even if inflation pops off adds some security to your finances. These three chips are all great for protecting yourself from inflation and other economic downturns. There are plenty of things we can be learning about and do today for our future financial situation. That being said, if Charlie Munger's prediction comes true and fiat currencies like the dollar hit zero, there will likely be much bigger problems to handle than where your wealth is. Thanks for coming back to Profit Protection, guys. We really appreciate your views and comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to support us and our future videos. We hope to be your go-to source for the info shared by thought leaders across the digital assets and financial market space. Happy researching. See you soon.